It's time lapse story time. <laughs> So I got to thinking that these time-lapse videos probably get a little boring. At least they get monotonous for me because it's always the same thing over and over and over again. You know, mix up your paint, put on the canvas, blend it. You know, it's a little bit of a lather, rinse, repeat situation. So I thought, why not mix things up a little bit and just tell a story? So this is a true story that happened to me many years ago. This is far enough in my past where I am no longer affected physically when telling this story. And by that I mean I don't go into full body convulsions anymore. But there was a time when this would cause me to lose my lunch. <clears throat> so let me just set the scene for you. It's the weekend of the ROT, AKA the ROT Rally in Austin, Texas. And for those of you that don't know, the ROT Rally is a huge biker rally held in the summer in Austin where people come from all over the world to attend. And on, I believe it was Fridays, they caravan, like everybody caravans down to 6th Street. Okay, so it's me and three other couples. One of the couples, we will call them, let's just call them Jeff and Judy. Jeff is the kind of guy that would never turn down a dare. He's also like very animated and he's pretty quick with the humor. Judy, on the other hand, is funny in her own right, but the girl has never been able to keep a secret to save her soul. If she knows something about you, then you can pretty much bet that everyone else is going to know about it in a matter of time. The girl is a bit of a blabbermouth. So I'll get back to them in just a minute. So we're all down on 6th Street, all decked out in our biker gear, walking around, trying to decide where to go first. By the way, if you've never been to 6th Street in Austin, it is, or it was, the place to be on any given weekend when we were in our 20s. It would get so packed down there that they would close off the street to traffic. And then we would just bar hop all night and it was a blast. At least that that's how it was when I was in my 20s. I assume it's still the same today, but I'm not sure. Cause let's just say it's been a hot minute since I've been down there. Anyway, we settled on a bar called Waldo's. So we go in, we grab the table that is positioned in the front window so we can people watch and not miss any of the action happening out on the street. So I sit down at the table so that I'm facing the window. Big mistake. Jeff is to my left and at the head of the table. Judy is across the table from me with her back to the window. The other two couples are positioned on my right. So there we are drinking beer, people watching through the window, having a really good time. And at this point, we've gone through about three or four pitchers of beer, give or take. We're all feeling good, laughing, telling lies, and having a good time. When we notice that there's a bit of a commotion stirring outside the window. So we all look out the window just in time to see a drunk girl puke up everything but her shoes all over the sidewalk. And I don't know what she had eaten, but she must have inhaled her food because it came up in big chunks. It looked like a big pile of soggy dog food. Blech. Everyone at the table is cracking up hysterically as they watch people trying to avoid this big puddle of puke. And everyone is finding this hilarious 
except for me. That's right. Instead, I'm trying to keep my own system from evacuating its own stomach contents. I'm over here in my own hell, doing something akin to Lama's breathing, trying to not spew chunks all over the table. See, I'm not the girl you call to come hold your hair and comfort you when you're praying to the porcelain gods. Nope, you're on your own. I'm not the one. I can't s stand seeing, hearing, or smelling puke, period. So while all this is going on, I move my chair over enough so that Judy is blocking my view of the window. I'm hoping that by removing one of my senses from the scenario, the, this will help me regain my composure, which does help until Judy decides to excuse herself from the table. So I'm like back to a Lamaze breathing situation again. But after a few minutes, the conversation finally turns to something less sickening. Thank God. And I finally get my body under control. Until. Don't do it. I look up and out the window, right as another drunk girl walks right through the pile of puke that everybody else had managed to avoid. And what's worse is that she was wearing sandals and she ended up with chunks on her toes. So gross. Apparently, I was not the only one at the table to witness this because Jeff jumps up from the table, runs outside to the pile of puke and jumps in with both feet and starts grinding his boots into the pile. He then runs up, up to the bar window and slams the sole of his boot onto the glass. The tread of his biker boot was embedded with huge puke chunks. Oh my stars. I bolted up so fast that I launched my chair through the air as I backed away from the table and then proceeded to mow over about 50 people on my way to the bathroom. Get out of the way, people. This is not a drill. So I get to the bathroom, fling open the door, only to find a line of girls at least 10 deep or so. So in the span of like a nanosecond, I scan the room and realize that all the stalls are occupied. The sinks are all covered with girls fluffing their hair and whatnot. What do I do? I can't cut in line people are not going to understand what's going on but the launch sequence has been activated and all systems are a go and things are coming up and they are coming up fast so i did the only thing i could do people yep i threw up in the trash can in front of everyone now let me tell you something about myself that you may not know when i was younger i was incredibly shy I've gotten over my shyness as I've gotten older, but I used to be painfully shy. I did not like a lot of attention drawn to me, and I sure as heck did not under any circumstances want to be the center of attention. But here I am in a bathroom full of strangers puking up everything but my memories, and the whole time I'm thinking, thank goodness I don't know any of these people. Because once I leave this bathroom, this will have never happened. Because no one will ever know. So, after I get done, I move towards the sink. Well, let me tell you, after you've thrown up in front of a bunch of people, they will part the seas to get away from you. They're so scared you've got puke on you and you're going to get it on them. And who knows at this point, maybe I did. I have no clue. Either way, I was quickly offered a sink where I rinsed out my mouth, blotted the sweat that was pouring down my face, and wiped the tears that were streaming from my eyes. Yeah, I was a hot mess, people. After
after I had somewhat regained my composure and cleaned myself up as best I could, I headed back to the table. So I'm walking back through the sea of people that are still gathering themselves up off the floor from where I'd previously mowed them over, when all of a sudden I feel a pair of hands on my shoulders. This stops me dead in my tracks. And a head peeks around from behind me and says, hey, are you okay? Recognizing the voice, I slowly turn my head to the right. And there is Judy standing behind me. And the realization hits that she had been in the bathroom and witnessed everything that just went down. So words out, people. Mortified, I tell her, yes, I'm fine. And she gives me a quick little backside hug thing. And her parting words to me as she skipped away towards our table were, oh yeah, you have toilet paper stuck to your shoe. Yep. On top of it all, I had just walked halfway through this crowded bar with a four foot section of toilet paper trailing behind me. So I leave you with this. If you ever think it can't get any worse, trust me, it most certainly can. You too could have toilet paper stuck to the bottom of your shoe in any given situation. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story and I pray it has never happened to you. What is worse is that I have several more of these vomit stories that I could tell. Let me know if you want to hear them. Also, let me know in the comment section if anything like this has ever happened to you. Please don't let me be the only one. So until next time, stay safe, stay calm, and stay kind.